Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and today we will be addressing the INTJ personality type and balance and development as an INTJ. And you know what I've found? I've found that a lot of people stare themselves too blind at their personal type code. I'm introverted, I'm intuitive, I'm thinking or I'm judging. Now what people forget is that no person is completely introverted, completely intuitive, completely thinking or completely judging. You have a side that is intuitive, a side that is introverted, a side that is thinking, and a side that is judging. And you balance hinges on developing and maintaining this side and letting it flourish inside of you. What I mean with this is you are an introverted and intuitive type. You are a thinking and judging type. You are an intuitive and judging type. And you are an introverted and thinking type. So balance is about balancing these four forces in yourself, as well as the fact of being an introverted and judging type and an intuitive and thinking type. Basically, you need to look at these letters together and you need to see how they all work together and you need to work on and make sure you develop all of them. The accident, the problem a lot of people run into is developing only one or two of these letters at the expense of the others, causing imbalance within self. And for example, a core problem can be, for example, overdeveloping your judging function at the expense of your intuition or thinking, or overdeveloping your introverted side at the expense of your judging side. What this can manifest in is sometimes a mistype in which we start thinking we're another type than what we are, and when we start behaving in a way that we don't like, even though it gives us stress. Another common issue is that we can become dogmatic or erratic or that we can become less open-minded and less agreeable, less conscientious or less outgoing. We can find it difficult to translate our vision into an actual plan of action. We can find ourselves thinking about doing something but never doing anything. We can find ourselves stuck on a drawing table thinking up, drawing up plans but never acting on them. Or we can find ourselves going forward and pushing ourselves out, but forgetting our plan or our personal goal or strategy. So, what are the things you need to consider? First, let's look at each of these four functions. Let's start with introverted intuition. The two biggest mistakes I see with regards to introverted intuition are, first, going into introverted sensing, and second, going into extroverted intuition. When an introverted intuitive goes into introverted sensing, it is to put up a wall around the world around them. It is to block out, it is to hone their in on their introverted side so much that you start compromising your openness. You are generally meant to be a person that is more introverted, more focused on the internal. But a hyper-focus on the internal can easily lead to a stagnation in the personality and in your development. You stop taking in new information, you stop considering alternative perspectives. You go and you focus so much on not just your theories, but also the facts that you have that can prove your theories. That you can't hear anybody outside. You can't listen to other people, you can't take in what they are saying. You can't use it to add to your understanding of the world. You're just building up an internal worldview with internal facts and data. The other problem I see is going into extrovert intuition. And this means in some ways forsaking your introverted side. It is completely focusing on what's happening around you, even to the point of where it can become agitating and where you can become more shy and more reserved. You struggle to assert your own theories or your own thoughts or your own consciousness and frame of mind. You have your own opinions and your own thoughts, but you can't really give them room. You can't really let them flourish because you're too focused on what's happening around you. You're too focused on changes and you're too focused on how everything, all the new information that's coming in. You're letting your openness compromise your personal process and your personal point of view and your personal thoughts and experiences. When, with regards to introverted thinking, a lot of theories forget the role of introverted thinking in an INTJ. They instead tend to talk about this function in regards to INTPs. But INTJs should also look at themselves from the perspective of young and introverted thinking. Sure, INTJs don't have the 
accuracy aspect of think introverted thinking. They're not about uh, testing and analyzing and seeing how things work from different angles and in, uh, monitoring the room and monitoring what works and what's going on and what's happening and what's being efficient and what's being inefficient. But INTJs are a lot about critical thinking, and that's how introverted thinking manifests in an INTJ. INTJs share the INTP's love for critical thinking, for careful analysis, for basically going inside and seeing how things should work. It's like your ability to reason about how the world should be and how it should work, your ability to say this is how things should be going, and then to look at the world and say, hey, that's not how it's actually going. So as an introverted thinker, it's important to have your own opinion on how things should work and to express and to say this is how I think things should go. That is proper use of introverted thinking. Unproper use of introverted thinking is to sacrifice your own opinion on how things should be, going into extroverted thinking and focusing purely on how things are. Sure, this is how I think things should be, but that's how the world is. Like to purely resign to how the world looks and how things work around you. And to struggle to voice your own opinion and to suggest improvements and su to suggest changes. Perhaps out of fear of appearing too critical or uh, too dogmatic or too uh, harsh. Another problem is going too deep into your introverted side. Once again, going into introverted feeling. What I can find here is overvaluing on not just how you think things should be but also on how you intend for things to be to focus not just on seeing the logical most efficient way a world the world around you could work but also seeing how you would personally want it to look and how you would personally want it to be shaped what tends to happen here is it can become an almost uh, uh, too dogmatic, too internal worldview. It takes no regard to the people around you or to what they want or to what they like. And it can become to the point where it can appear that you are completely resistant to other people's opinions and thoughts and values and what they like and dislike and how they want things. So it can cause you to not grow or to not think about the moral aspects of reality. Basically, looking only at how you want the world to be and never considering what other people might want. And in this, sometimes forgetting important moral facts like uh, what uh, other people need, what the world needs, how the world functions and why the world functions the way it does. Another problem comes with regards to thinking and judging. Now, INTJs are thinking and judging types, and what that means is they like to strategize and plan a course, and they like to see how things should go, and how best to organize an event or a trip or something they're going to do. The co two core issues thinking and judging types fall into are thinking and perceiving, and feeling and judging. With regards to thinking and perceiving, it becomes to the point where you become too subservient. You listen too much to changes around you. You don't hold on to it. If you've got a good plan, you keep adjusting and fine-tuning it too much. You keep on trying to make sure it fits all the time for everyone, that it's always going to work out whatever people want it to work and whatever people want to do. Your plan will always work for them and it will always be adjusted to them. And it can become too subservient to the point where you start sacrificing how you would want the situation to go. Like if you see a way you want the world to go and if you have a strong opinion about that, that's a good thing. And you need, don't need to compromise that to fit with how other people might want it or what might be a little more ideal in the situation. Sometimes it's okay to be a little rough and to just push. The other trap is going too much into feeling and judging. And that is basically to the point of becoming a little controlling or a little bit manipulative, a little too forceful, basically to the point where you start thinking not just on how you want things to go, but also how you would like things to go and in what way, to the point where you become too controlling of other people. You start not just controlling how things are done at the workplace, but also how people talk and what they say and how they say things, to the point where it can appear like you're too forceful and basically uh, 
wrapping people around your finger and uh, making them into marionettes. Like, you have to consider people's free will and their ability to uh, make their own choices and their own decisions. Focus your control on what people do and how productive they're being and how they get the job done. Try not to focus too much on the conduct of how people do things and their methods and how they like to do something. So those are the important things to balance there. With regards to intuition and judging, what I found, the two core issues I found are going too much into sensing and judging, in which case you start focusing too much once again on control. You not only have a vision for how you want things to go, but you also try too much to discipline yourself. You have to do everything on a schedule. You have to do everything according to a certain plan or in certain steps. Intuitive and judging types are soft judging types. That's how it's meant to be. When you go too much into discipline and we start timetabling what you do too much and when you start basically scheduling your time and when you need to do what, you lose a little of your creative aspect. You know, intuition and judging needs a degree of creative freedom in the sense that you have to let your drive drive you. Intuition and judging is a like creative drive, a visionary drive. So it's uh, basically it works best when you're doing what you want to do, when you're imagining something and when you're spending time working on something. So a new thought comes to mind, a new idea pops up. Ideally, you want to take time to work on that idea and to sit and work on it until that drive diminishes or goes somewhere else. Then you want to move in that direction instead. You don't want to force your own intuition and say, I have to work on this idea at that time and then at that idea at that time. You can't timetable your intuition. Intuition is too uh, abstract of a force to timetable. The other core issue is going too much into intuition and perceiving. And with intuition and perceiving, the core problem becomes uh, being too aware of changes. Being too aware of uh, new ideas and all kinds of concepts around you that you haven't mapped out. You know, intuition and judging is sometimes a map. It's good, well described as a map in the sense of how everything, all ideas fit together. What's likely, what's reasonable, what's was possible with intuition and perceiving when you overdevelop your intuition and perceiving and hone in your openness at the expense of your control well first of course you lose that control that you need to have a sense of power over your environment and your surroundings but you also lose your ability to maintain a grasp on the bigger picture you uh, start entertaining and working on ideas that are highly unlikely or probably won't work and you start collapsing your own systems and your own map, it is a fragile development. It's basically just a concept. It's a loose concept. It's just how you see things. It's just your worldview. It's just an abstract worldview. It's not based on anything proven. It's not based on anything tested. It's just a base a map of likelihoods, a, a map of ye- general terms and abstract ideas and potential. So it is a very fragile thing, and it's very important to maintain it and to take care of it well. That is why you have to let yourself wait before you entertain a new possibility. Give yourself time to process something. Don't force yourself to consider everything at the same time. Don't force yourself to think of all ideas at the same time. Take your time to formulate your own worldview and to fit ideas in your worldview before you consider them. INTJs are introverted, intuitive, thinking, and judging types, but they are not 100% introverted, not 100% intuitive, not 100% thinking, and not 100% judging. They don't share all the traits associated with introversion, and not all the traits associated with intuition, and not all the traits associated with thinking, and not all the traits associated with judging. So you shouldn't take it as a roadmap that I should always be planned, I should always be organized, I should always have a detailed idea of how things should be and I should always be able to explain what I'm thinking about. You shouldn't take it as meaning I should always have ideas, I should always be creative, I should always be abstract, I should always think in general terms. That's not how it's meant to be. You have a sweet spot. You have a sweet spot and that sweet spot is balance. You know, balance isn't doing what everyone else around you is doing in moderation. Balance is personal, highly personal. It depends on your personal interests, who you are as a person. 
So balance is a mental thing. It's based on your interests and what you want and how you like to do things. So you have to always consider what do I like to do? How do I like to do things? In what way and to what extent? And flow and balance, that's basically uh, when your mind is working at optimal capacity. You're doing exactly what you want to do in the way you would like to do it. The problems that I listed here are all things that keep you from doing what you want to do at optimal strength. And sure, at times that can be a good strategy. You don't always have to be in flow. You don't always have to be balanced. Sometimes work will demand other things of you. Sometimes friends will demand other things of you. Then, sure, compromise. With our work, with relationships, with friends, what we have to understand is wiggle room. Use your wiggle room. Wiggle room is basically telling your boss, yeah, okay, I'll follow this schedule and this timetable and I try to stick by this, but could I have one day a week where I spend time working on ideas and on projects uh, more in a free way? Because I, it, that will help me maintain optimal productivity and it will probably help you get better ideas and more concepts and more possibilities for your workplace. Sure, uh, I can take time uh, to uh, cater and adjust this plan to what you want as well. And I'll take your considerations into account. But could you give me some time to process your ideas before you ask me for your opinion on them? Can you give me some time to think about... Uh, what you just said and how I want to factor it in, how I want to do it before I give you my final thoughts on it. I'll be open to what you say. I'll take about what you say. I'll try to learn from your experiences and I'll try to uh, find some good compromise or some good solution for both of us. But uh, give me some time to do my own thing and to do things my way. That's wiggle room. So yeah, use your wiggle room and if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I will post a lot of content on personal development for different personality types. I will talk about this, I'll talk about the big five, I'll talk about the MTI, and I'll talk about your cognitive functions and your mental thought processes. I love being on YouTube and your support on patreon.com slash ericthor helps me a lot. It helps me a great deal in supporting my videos and my content. Visit ericdor.com if you're interested in reading articles and content on the different personality types. And um, yeah, thanks for being here and thanks for being a part of this project.